A very, very warm welcome to you uh, for this very special event. We are here live in Tarbes, in the southwest of France, at the foothills of the Pyrenees, at the birthplace of the TBM. And um, I'm standing next to today uh, a man called Didier Kayat, who is the boss uh, of Dahe. And, um, and I think, first off, uh, we should uh, acknowledge the fact that it's been an exceptionally difficult year for the aviation industry. And... Um, I think uh, it would be really good to, to find out a little bit more about what's been happening and is it really appropriate to be making a, a celebratory occasion of the thousandth uh, plane uh, departing these, uh, this factory on a day such as today? Hi, hi Tobias, yeah, thank you. You're right, it might sound as a paradox to do this celebration today. 2020 has been a terrible year for aviation. I mean, it's, it's with this pandemics, the coronavirus, with the impact on uh, all the airlines and all our other aircraft manufacturers. And on top of that, with all these environmental issues that are raised and, and the plane bashing. So yes, it's a terrible year. But it's not because it, it's, it's a terrible year that we should not celebrate something as important as the 1,000 of, of a series. Why? Because the aircraft will always be uh, an object of freedom of magic, putting uh, uh, stars in the, in the eyes. You know, an aircraft is done with passion. The passion of all the people here around us in the final assembly line of the TBM. And if you allow me to say one word in French, merci messieurs qui autour de cette chaîne d'assemblage finale fait avec passion cet avion. But also the passion of our customers, also the passion of all the people taking care of the plane in flight. And uh, this passion will be stronger than all the events that we had in 2020. We have taken care of the, uh, of the health of all the people working with us. We are going to re make a real rebound uh, after this crisis. We do believe that aviation has a bright future and we are going to work on all these greener aircraft because we know that it is our responsibility to do so. But yes, despite this year, despite the paradox, it's a good year to celebrate such an event. So can you tell us a little bit about where we are now with Daher and, and where the future is? Well, for those who don't know Daher quite well, you know, we are a very old company. We started more than 160 years ago, and we are uh, here to last at least another 160 years. We are a family-owned company, which means a lot, because when we talk about taking care of the environment, uh, building greener aircraft, we know as a family-owned company how this responsibility has to rely on us because we are here to last. We are, of course, an aircraft manufacturer that you know with the, 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 the aircraft that, that we do, the one we do here, the one we do in the US, but Nicola will explain later. We are also a big equipment manufacturer, system, a system and equipment manufacturer for commercial aircraft, for uh, aviation aircraft, and we are also a big player in logistics and supply chain. But maybe the best way to know who Dyer is is to watch at this little movie uh, talking about us. We are pioneers, manufacturers, and service providers. We work as engineers, craftsmen, pilots. We shape our aircrafts from conception to operation as masters of every required skill. We take safety, reliability, and efficiency to their heights rising to meet the challenges of precision, responsibility, and performance. Together, we are creating the smart industry of tomorrow. We support your projects and convey your ambitions. We strengthen our capabilities and broaden our view of the world. We are at the forefront of the digital revolution as it carries the promise of the industry of the future, a reinvented industry. We are the reference in tomorrow's world. Our company is united and forward-looking, convinced that beyond the horizon, a new era of achievements is opening. The way ahead is clear. We are Daer, and we will succeed together.
Well, it's a very inspirational film, and uh, I'm very much uh, a fan of the last words, we will succeed together. And I think a man who can really explain a little bit more about uh, where Dahe's aircraft division is, is it's indeed its senior vice president, uh, Nicolas Chabert. Um, Nicolas, tell us about the aircraft division. Well, Tobias, I have to say that uh, thinking of your question number one, I'm thinking about the women and men that are making these aircraft uh, every day and for decades. I'm thinking about engineering, thinking about procurement, production, thinking about sales, support, quality. All of the functions are essential to make an aircraft safe and reliable for our customers. Uh, the aircraft division is dealing every day uh, with its customers. It's beyond the TBM. We have uh, produced a lot of aircraft in the past. It's actually about 4,000 aircraft that we oversee every day, uh, coming with the uh, military trainer TB30, TB the, TB the TB lines, the rallies, um, and, and many other legacy products. So we are here to serve these customers, um, not forgetting the past. And we are also having the network, a very comprehensive network of dealers and service centers around the world. It's actually 54 of those service centers that are every day uh, making sure that our customers are safe flying the aircraft. So obviously, I mean, this is a, uh, a, a very important year to get it all right. And I think um, I'm quite interested to know about uh, essentially uh, the production capabilities of the aircraft. And I think it would be a good time to introduce Thierry at this point, isn't it? The, the uh, production of the aircraft, as you know, it's uh, here from TARBS. You just mentioned that we are just right yeah. here in the middle of the assembly line of the TBM, but it's also our facilities in Sandpoint, Idaho, where we produce the Kodiak uh, family of aircraft. And I think it is uh, indeed the perfect moment to introduce uh, Thierry Gendre, who is the head of manufacturing for Daer. Yeah, so Thierry, thank you very much for being here. Um, Thierry Gendre, you are the senior vice president of the industry division, but you are also quite interesting because you are relatively new to TBM and to Dahe's aircraft division because you've recently come from Airbus. So as a, as a, a moderately famous uh, aircraft manufacturer, what comparisons can you make between what I'd argue to be the best manufacturer in the world but the one that you've probably never heard of, Dahe? Thank you, Tobias. Uh, one of my first takeaway from my first uh, two years and a half in, in Dahe is that uh, according to me, the, the four most beautiful planes in, in, in the world are F320, F350, the, uh, TBM, and the Kodiak. Mm. And uh, we are facing, uh, we talk about it, uh, a big crisis for the time being. And, uh, and clearly the TBM uh, in, in the plants uh, is uh, an oxygen bubble today, uh, our jewel, and it's helping us to get through the crisis, and I am sure that it will help us to get out from the crisis. Another important thing to add is that when we go, uh, for the time being, uh, go to see and to talk with uh, our main customers, uh, except the TBM, Airbus Commercial, uh, Dassault, uh, Airbus Helicopter, Gulfstream, all, uh, they agree, uh, to, to say that being an aircraft manufacturer today uh, is a, a great, great asset compared to our competitors. Indeed. Um, Nicholas, I think uh, you know, it would be important to, to look at the history of where TBM has come from because obviously it's got a, a magnificent history and it's achieved a monumental amount of, amount of innovations in a, in a relatively short amount of time. So, so can you tell us something about that, please? Well, the history of the TBM is a long-standing and uh, we rely on two things in aviation. We have to learn from experience, but we also have to look at history, where we are coming from, making sure that basically we can pass two generations, what we have uh, taken from the previous generations. So 30 or so uh, years ago, um, uh, a certain number of people have been key to introduce this uh, very novelty, this very new aircraft. It was the first single engine turboprop to be ever designed and uh, presented to the market. So I think it is, it is time for us to have a look back on a few individuals that, that really paved this program uh, decades ago.
patent the French manufacturer Cicata, known for its range of touring and training aircraft, started a new adventure with Mooney Aircraft from Texas. Their idea? To create a pressurized single-engine turboprop airplane, one that would offer jet-like performance with the safety and reliability of the turbo engine for a fraction of the jet cost. To have the largest market possible, it had to be within reach of private pilots in terms of pricing as well as flying skills. Two supercharged aviation managers would be responsible for this new aircraft's birth. Pierre Gauthier, chief executive officer of Secata and a former manager of the Concorde program at France's Aerospatial, and Alexandre Coulvelaire, CEO of Mooney Aircraft and one of Europe's pioneers of business aviation. Originally, the project was codenamed the M301, a pressurized six-seater whose prototype had been built by Mooney. Initial studies convinced the technical management, headed by Claude Delay, who later became the Airbus chief test pilot, that work had to be started anew, making use of computer-assisted design for the first time in this aircraft category. I was asked when I came to Sakata to build a new aircraft after the TB20. And one day somebody said that we should prepare a successor to the Paris jet, which was a twin-built aircraft flying at 300 knots. We started from a blank sheet of paper to achieve the same performance at 300 knots, but with more efficiency and whilst carrying six persons on board. One of our jobs was to size the cabin and we prepared the mock-up with wood and carbon. And then after three years of working, the project plane was shown to the public. They proposed a solution for general aviation that was comparable to the technology breakthrough introduced by the supersonic Concorde for jetliners. The company's answer was an aircraft with pressurized cabin capable of carrying seven people with a cruise speed of 300 knots at an altitude of 30,000 feet and capable of distances of approximately 1,500 nautical miles, a performance comparable to those of a warbird. With the help of Aerospatial's research department in Toulouse, the wing was modelled on the computer designs of the twin-engine ATR-72 turboprop airliner. The outcome was an aircraft weighing approximately 3,500 pounds with a 40-feet wingspan and manufactured the most modern technical standards used for Airbus jetliners, including metal bonding and some composites. It was named TBM-700. TB for TAB, the home city for Sakata's headquarters and manufacturing facilities, and M for Mooney. The 700 reference corresponded to the power of its Pratt & Whitney PT-6 turboprop engine, famous for its reliability under the most stringent conditions and one used to power thousands of aircraft around the world. The programme officially was launched at a press conference during the 1987 Paris Air Show, where a model of the fuselage was unveiled. This was followed by the acceleration of development activities and ground-based prototype testing. Less than one year later, on June 13, 1988, the TBM 701 prototype made its official rollout at TAB, christened by the former Apollo astronaut Frank Borman, together with Muriel Hermine, the European synchronized swimming champion. One month later, the 01 prototype thrust its three tons into the air. The second TBM 700 prototype flew for the first time in August 1989. Two months later, the third prototype. By October 1990, the TBM 700 became the world's first civilian pressurized single-engine turboprop to be certified, and the deliveries could now begin. Good day, everyone. My name, is My name is Christophe Vandenbroek and I joined the Doha team as sales director for France in 1986 with a mission to provide private individuals a line of single piston aircraft we would produce in the south of France. The next year I was appointed as sales director for Europe and two years later after my boss left the company I became vice president and president of Sakata Aircraft. By well, the time where Pierre Gauthier, our charismatic chairman, put in place talks and negotiations with Alexandre Couvelaire, the chairman of Mooney, uh, they would both share the vision about the revolutionary concept, a six-seater pressurized aircraft, single-engine turboprop with two significant numbers in mind, 300 knots and 3,000 feet. I know very well the incredible noise this aircraft made when we unveiled the full-scale market in 1989 at the FDA. From the very beginning, the expectation in terms of sales were around 350 units altogether in order to reach the break-even point of the program. But I don't recall anyone thinking of the four-digit number at that time. 
The next one was reached when we signed a distributor agreement for the Western US with Terry Winson, who was a strong supporter of the program and placed an order of 10 aircraft at the same time in 1990. We listened to our customers' feedback and we did a number of improvements on the aeroplane. Uh, one of the main ones was a large standard door and the optional pilot door. I left the company in 2001 and I went back to aviation. I will never forget my friends at Daher. And if I may, I would like to take the opportunity to say a big hello to all of those who are mentioned and we are still working for the company. The keys of the TBM serial number one were handed over to Jurek Brunner, a German customer, the same month during the annual convention of the US National Business Aviation Association in New Orleans. With an established program, the manufacturer spread its wings during the 1990s. It acquired new infrastructure, along with a 30-foot tall assembly hall and a new paint shop facility in 1992. Cockpits evolved with new instruments, namely the electronic flight instrument system, which replaced the former electromechanical instruments. Moreover, the growing use of satellite-based global positioning systems now provided general aviation with assets comparable to those of the most modern airliners. When I joined the company in 1994, general aviation was again facing crisis, so we were aiming at professional and government customers. I urged the executive team to launch the cargo version of the TBM, which could be ideal to address these markets. In 1995, we presented a mock-up at the Paris Air Show. It was challenging, but with Sakata's initiative, twinned with their professionalism and dedication, we did it. Two years later, we presented the TBM 700 prototype with two new options, an oversized side fuselage cargo door, and the second was the possibility of a forward fuselage pilot door. This model became the TBM 700B, certified in 1999. With the addition of a gaseous backup oxygen system and quick donning masks, the TBM 700B's service seating was raised to 31,000 feet. My other decisive action was to move our US operations from Texas to Florida. We sent a junior director of sales, Nicolas Chabert, marking the start of our significant commercial success in the United States. TBM continued its evolution with the TBM 700C2 in 2003, certified with an increased maximum takeoff weight of just under 7,500 pounds, allowing more payload with full fuel. This modification included a reinforced airframe, thicker tyres, seats certified to 20 Gs, a new interior and a new rear external luggage compartment. The beginning of the 21st century saw new trends in the revitalised general aviation sector. A new generation of private pilots wanted faster airplanes to use for both business and personal travels. In the same time, they requested more user-friendly cockpits instead of the classic gauges. The first concern was addressed by the engineering department working with Pratt & Whitney Canada team to install a more powerful engine on the TBM without increasing the fuel consumption. The solution was to find a new engine version of the PT6A, which would become the PT6A 66D. Able to burn fuel at higher temperatures, it produced 1,825 horsepower, flat rated to 850 shaft horsepower, giving the TBM 850 a more jet-like performance with turboprop efficiency and economical operation. Announced at the end of 2005, the TBM 850 became instantly a success and the production increased from an average of 30 airplanes a year to 45. The second trend was later addressed with a new partner, the Garmin Company. They developed for the TBM 850 a customised version of its G1000 all-glass integrated cockpit panel. Three large flat LCD screens were replacing gauges and quadrants, raising the popularity of the TBM 850 to new heights. I joined Sokata in September, I joined Sakata in September 1989, more than one year after the flight of the original model, the TBM 700A, in July 1988. We were three test pilots involved in the program. The first certification was obtained in October 1990. Then the 850 instrument panel was upgraded with the Garmin G1000 in July 2006 and certification was obtained at the end of 2007. I am so happy to know we are reaching the serial number 1000. There were so many improvements between each model but mainly in terms of performance and avionics. 
Also, I'm very fascinated by the home safe system recently certified. Good luck to Dahe and TBM. The Dahe takeover of Sakata in 2009 resulted in the integration of the TBM program into the Dahe portfolio. This change fueled ongoing engineering development of the TBM again. Short term works resulted in enhancing the TBM cabin. The result was the TBM 850 Elite, which provided customers the flexibility to rapidly switch between a six-seat layout and a four-seat arrangement with an extended luggage area. This Elite interior was highly praised by its customers and now is a standard offer. The success of the TBM 850 broadens the base of customers worldwide. Government operators for special missions, private owners such as the famous movie director Francis Ford Coppola, and corporate flight departments. By 2011, when the 600th TBM is rolled out of the factory, the fleet has accumulated nearly 1 million hours. And so the TBM story continues. So if you have any questions about what's been happening today, I would like to point out that on your screen you will notice a question box. Now, if you were to click on that question box, this is your opportunity to write a message to us here. And towards the end of the program, we are going to be answering your questions and uh, letting you shed some light on actually what's happening uh, in the future. So, um, firstly, um, there are now, in the latest generation of the TBM, there are now two models, if I'm not mistaken, the 940 and the 910. So, um, What's different about those compared to previous models? Well, Tobias, uh, first let me say that uh, uh, the new names of the people that you've seen on the video um, in sales, we have uh, Michel Adam de Villiers uh, here in Florida. We have uh, Raphael Maitre, the head of customer support. Uh, we also have a full team of people in engineering, Christophe Nicolas. We also have supporting team from the programs uh, and procurement, Delphine and Samuel. Uh, quality with Jean-Marc. It's an important team that is joining all of Thierry Gendre team to make sure that this aircraft is produced. So we are absolutely fanatic of one thing. We want this aircraft to evolve. We have actually uh, made a big steps in the program with the TBM 900 series, where today we offer the 910 and the 940 based on the Garmin G1000 for the first one and in fact, the G3000 for the second one. But what is most important uh, for us on this new aircraft is we have achieved uh, with this year version of the TBM 940, what I would consider to be a big milestone in safety with what we've called home safe, was actually capable for the first time to take the aircraft back uh, and land autonomously in case of an emergency, in case in fact, the pilot is incapacitated. So we have reached uh, the best of what you've seen from this wonderful history and legacy, uh, the experience that is coming from many decades of uh, uh, this program with the latest and greatest technology, which is making sure that our pilots and our customers can fly reliably and safely. So this is really what it is embedded into the 910 and 940, along with all of the service that we provide to our customers uh, to make sure that on a 7, uh, on a 24 7, we are able to respond to anything that is uh, needed to operate the aircraft. So we're actually being joined today by a very special guest, a man who's actually just arrived uh, from the US of A, um, Dirk Reuter, and he had a very special adventure last year where he um, yeah, did something quite remarkable. Dirk, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us what happened last year? Yes, to be a great pleasure to be here today. And uh, last year, we, a friend of mine, Phil Bozek, and I set out to sp break the speed record on the uh, Lindbergh trip from New York to Paris. And, and with some terrific support from Daher, we're able to cross from New York to Paris nonstop in eight and a half hours, or about an hour and a half faster than Chuck Yeager at an average speed of 370 knots. So that's, uh, that's business jet speed. It was an outstanding experience. Great, great positions went into the preparation with lots of terrific support. 
and, and flawless execution. And by the way, on that notice, we have owned TBMs for 12 years now. Not a single time has there ever been a situation when the aircraft was not ready to fly. So I can imagine like a discussion like this probably involved a pub, maybe a drink, and the idea of, of crossing an ocean. I mean, like, how did it happen? And when did you have that confidence to believe that this was something feasible? Well, that's a terrific question. And um, my, my wife, Caroline, which, by the way, the new button is called the Caroline button in the, uh, in the, uh, in the Reuter family, um, is a born cook. And there's the Cook Islands in the South Pacific. So we decided we're going to visit the Cook Islands someday. My wife challenged that situation a little bit. And then there were some discussions where, you know, some long distance flights were involved. And, and, and Michelle actually suggested, hey, Derek, why don't you do something easy and suggested New York, Paris. And, uh, and with some luck, we're going to have some more interesting things coming up, you know, as COVID releases and allows for interesting things. But the important thing is it demonstrates that a single engine aircraft can be materially faster than a twin engine aircraft and use a whole lot less fuel, be greener in that sense, and a very, very safe experience. And what struck me about, about the Daho Group and the TBM uh, family, should we say, is it really is a family-run business, but those owners are also part of the family. I mean, what does it feel like to be a TBM owner? When you meet another aviation enthusiast, what are the kind of things you might discuss? And you know, what do they say? Well, it, it's, uh, you know, the TBM owners group is, is, is a special group and it's really quite fascinating because it is the fastest aircraft largely flown by the owners who are by and large people who have done interesting things in their life and, and, and to meet in that group and have challenging discussions and, and talk about, you know, businesses and business experience on one end as well as then, um, you know, going places and meeting is, is, is just a superb experience. Lots of sparks happening in that group. So your current plane that you flew today, what number is that plane? Do you know what it is, what serial number it is? Uh, our aircraft is 1166, and uh, you know it's uh, been operating now for not quite three years and has about uh, almost 1,100 hours of operation, which, uh, which is, I guess, you know, pretty much flawed. It's been to Antarctica. It's been to various places in Africa. It's uh, been to the Arctic. And, uh, you know, as I said, flawless execution to this date. Really superb. So this brings us on to today's uh, kind of meaning, should we say. So, what, Nicholas, what is actually happening today? Because we've got a special moment. Well, Tobias, I think, and, and you know, uh, like uh, Dirks is expressing, I uh, my, my thinking is definitely towards the 1,000th customers that are uh, behind their screens or behind the wheel of their TBM. And... Uh, this 1,000th aircraft is, in fact, uh, very, very special for us, for all of uh, uh, my team and all of the Dyer employees uh, that want to continue to serve you and to continue to evolve and to have the greatest product. So it's a 1,000 customers that we are celebrating today. Well, I think this is a good time to go and watch the film celebrating this moment. I believe this is the moment we've been waiting for. Didier, Nicolas. This is the 
Cuenta. Let's roll out to the rollout of the, the 1000 TBM. So now the plane is ready to be ferried to the USA and it seems an opportune moment to speak to the customer, the man who will be receiving the thousandth plane, um, James Hislop. So hopefully we can connect uh, to uh, the call now with him. I hope he's live. We're just waiting for the connection to be made to James now and hopefully we should be there. Welcome, James. Good afternoon, or good morning, I should say. Well, good afternoon to all my friends in France and around the world. We're pretty excited here for you, I think. Are you, are you as excited as we are to receive uh, your, uh, <laughs> your, your toy? I don't know how to describe it, really. Well, I'm, I'm hugely excited. Uh, I saw the plane on the computer, ate a prototype, but it's far more spectacular displayed in this fashion for certain. Maybe, well, uh, good morning and uh, thank you for, for your business. It's uh, very important to us and uh, thank you for making it alive. Can you tell us what this 1,000th represents to you? Uh, is that Nicholas uh, speaking? It's hard for me to tell. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Nicholas, um, first off, I'm, uh, I'm grateful and humbled to be purchasing an aircraft with such a rich history of technology, continuous improvement in craftsmanship, for sure. Um, and I'm pleased that the number 1000 is shedding light on management, engineers, test pilots, ferry pilots, line staff, and specialists. And i just like to say that I was fortunate with the timing of this, but would like to recognize that there's 999 TBM owners that have come before me and contributed immensely to TBM's record of safety and growth. So I mean, I'm quite curious to know, I mean, when you receive your plane uh, shortly, what's the first thing you're going to do, apart from maybe hug it? Well, uh, I am uh, meeting uh, Jacques on Wednesday at Morristown Airport around 4 o'clock, and we're going to fly down to uh, the Pompano facility and uh, there's going to be a celebration down there, which is richly deserved. 
uh, that facility is just immaculate and spec spectacular, and it, it helped me convince me that I was in the right place. Uh, but, but with uh, with COVID, uh, I'll be heading back uh, north, and then in two weeks, uh, I'll start flying fairly consistency for business and uh, for angel flights and for personal. Well, it's, it's fantastic that your first meeting with the aircraft is actually going up and flying. And I know that uh, all the team down in Pompano is going to welcome you with uh, Michelle and uh, everybody. Uh, I know that they have a special uh, surprise for you, uh, for you coming. And uh, thank you for making that. But we don't want to hold you too much because I understand that with New York, Florida is asking you to stay quarantined. So it's not a good idea to stay. But at least, you know, you get to fly with Jacques uh, on the way uh, down to Pompano. I'm looking forward to that for sure. Just one, one, word, one word to tell you that I'm looking forward to meeting you in person as soon as we can fly again across the Atlantic. And thank you for trusting us. Oh, of course. Uh, I appreciate everything the, uh, the organization has done. It's been an incredibly positive experience. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, being part of the TBM family. Thank you, Jim, again for your business. Yeah, thank you, Jim. So I think this brings on to an opportune moment to now take some questions uh, for those who've been sending them in. And we'll do our best to answer them. Um, so uh, we'll allow a little moment just to organize ourselves. <coughs> Um, so we're just gathering together some of your questions now, and uh, we'll be with you in just a second. So the first question we've had is, um, is it true that the business aviation is less impacted than the airline industry by the current crisis? I think, Didier, well, this is yeah, for you. To give you rough figures, uh, our business is impacted by about 20%. We had a 20% goal that, uh, above what we've done this year what we're going to do this year, whereas commercial aviation is impacted by at least 40%, and airlines might be impacted by much more than that, mm. especially in Europe. So yes, business aviation is less impacted, even though it's a huge impact. Sure. So the next question we have um, talks about uh, your plans for making greener airplanes. So, so when actually do you plan to uh, bring a green TBM onto the market? Well. What I can tell is that we have, despite the huge economic crisis we are facing, we have decided to keep on investing on developing greener solutions for our TBM and for the, for the uh, aircraft aviation. We are partnering with Safran. We have announced that a year ago in the Bourget uh, in order to, to, to build a demonstrator of a hy hybrid plane. So yes, we are investing. Yes, we are going to make a lot of things around that, we cannot reveal that here, but we have decided to keep the investment with the support of the French state uh, in order to develop greener aircraft and exploring all the solutions with our uh, engine manufacturers. Nicolas? I think, uh, Didier, the question is also, uh, we are also uh, an important answer to this question. With the TPM uh, as it stands today, uh, we have uh, considerably made some efforts to make the, the aircraft more efficient. So the 900 is already a 10% efficiency over the uh, 850. And this is something that we are going to continue to do. It is both uh, coming from the product, but it's also coming from the service side. We introduced um, a couple of years ago, me and my TBM, an application that is actually helping you to uh, profile your flights and to save fuel. So to be the first answers before we can actually access uh, technologic breakthrough. So we have another question just come through. Uh, it says, can the TBM use biojet fuel? I think Nicolas, this one for you there. I think the first step that we have uh, with the biofuel is uh, the uh, sustainable alternative uh, uh, jet fuel, which is available today. And all of our airplanes have been certified to use SAF uh, whenever you can access to it. So the question for the owners today is to push our uh, fuel providers to deliver this solution. It is not the perfect solution today, but it's one answer that is actually lead the way to make the aircraft greener. 
So with 1,000 TBM, could you indicate the position of TBM and Daher in the aircraft company's ranking, Didier? I mean, not only the, the, the ranking, we are the oldest aircraft manufacturer still alive. And since Morin Sonnier to Daher, that's the first part of the, of the answer. And uh, with the TBMs and the Kodiaks, because we are also the proud manufacturers of the Kodiaks, I think we are ranking number seven worldwide, Nicola. That's impressive. I mean, this is the next question here is quite moot indeed. I mean, how many TBMs do you expect to deliver this year? And obviously, there's a slight catch to that because things have changed. Well, obviously, as uh, Didier mentioned, um, we have a slight reduction to uh, the plan that we had before COVID. We expect to uh, cross over 40 aircraft deliveries this year. Why am I not that precise is we have orders and I think it should take us above 40 aircraft this year. The question is really, can the supply chain continue to, uh, uh, to supply and to actually support us with that production plan? We believe that is going to be the case, but it is a challenge as we speak. So let's cross our fingers, but I know that Thierry's uh, team is all set up to deliver 42, 43 aircraft. So on to the next question. So this is from another person who said, TBM is an iconic model for Daher. Um, so the answer to the question is, do you plan to build other models with medium and long term to complete with the existing range limited to TBM and Kodiak's different models? And if so, do you plan to build a twin-engined aircraft? Did well, you? Of course, I will not answer the last part of your question yeah. because we never reveal what we do before we launch the aircraft. But what I can tell you is that we have invested a lot of money since we have acquired the TBM. When we acquired the TBM, the former uh, owner of the TBM told us, you know, TBM is going to die in two or three years. We were convinced that it is an iconic model, as you mentioned, Tobias, and that we could, by investing a lot of money, making last a long, long time. And we are convinced that, yes, we are going to make it last and develop lots of things, but if I would tell you now what I'm going to do in the coming years, nobody would buy the, the, the current TBMs. <laughs> so we do invest a lot. We do believe that there is a huge future around our aircraft, TBM and Kodiak, that we never reveal what we work on before we reveal the plane. Nicola, something to add? Nothing to add, Didier, you're perfect. Uh, we only want to talk with the aircraft in ends. So it's all a big secret. Right, we're on to the next question. So simple one here, do you plan to have to make basically a light aircraft. Mm, uh, who feels comfortable here, Didier or Nicolas? Uh, what I can say is that we at Daer work as a provider for bigger aircraft on components. We are a leader in the aerospace industry on thermoplastics, which is a huge breakthrough in terms of carbon fiber because you can recycle it. So talking about environment makes sense. And it's 20% it's lighter than metal. So we do have the know-how in order to make it lighter, but I don't know, I don't know whether they're talking about very light jets or light aircraft, Nicola. Uh, obviously, there is always uh, difficulties to try to enter uh, this lighter aircraft model. Uh, we believe that turboprop is uh, what we want to focus on, but we also, uh, when we had the question for greener, uh, we also very, uh, cautious to look at opportunities that may arise uh, when we talk about, uh, well, there is ESTOL or VTOL concept or EVTOL concepts. And we basically believe that uh, we should focus ourselves on the ESTOL. And uh, uh, with that respect, there is a size that may happen. Can we get to the very light aircraft? The answer is probably not in the current production uh, setup that we have. But can we contribute? The answer is probably yes. Perfect. Well, this is a slightly different question now. Um, this person would like to know how they can get hold of some TBM branded gear that's either uh, basically general or maybe specific to this event. And where do they do that? Well, I think I have to ask my communication team to answer that question, but I'm uh, guessing uh, we can provide all the details over email. So if you can. Uh, send that out to uh, Philippe de Segovia. We'll give you uh, all of the details of what can be uh, uh, handy for this 1000 TBM. Perfect. 
And we're on to, uh, again, more future plans. Uh, this person's asked, what are your plans and developments in, in Asia? Well, uh, one part of the question, or of the answer to that question, is that we have acquired uh, Kodiak a year ago, and Kodiak has a huge network uh, in Asia. We really count on this network to help us increase the visibility and the business of the TBM, also not only the Kodiak in Asia. That's part of the, of the answer. Nicholas, anything to add? Uh, I, think, uh, I think the uh, Kodiak business is more suited to uh, the specifics of Asia, uh, small islands and uh, shorter or difficult access uh, runways. And uh, we uh, already have a footprint uh, for this product that uh, is going to increase uh, over the years and probably will serve the TBM as well. Uh, when it comes to having a brand uh, penetration in, into that new area. But the Kodiak is definitely the aircraft that uh, answers that area of the world very much. Okay, well, I think we're going to approach the last question now. Um, this is from an owner of a 700 C2, and they would like to know if you're working on an auto land capability outside of home safe. Did well, you? Or, I, or I believe yeah. that uh, the uh, uh, evolution is going to be applicable to older model. There is a little bit of difficulty for me to answer by a yes or no as we speak, because there are some prerequisites that we need for this uh, emergency auto land to be applicable to older models. But with technology, uh, I am a strong believer that we may have a version of OMSAFE that can be applicable to all the model. It may take us a little bit of a time, and as we speak, the first model that is going to uh, make it applicable is in fact the TBM 910 uh, that uh, when it's available from Garmin, it's not yet available from Garmin, this is something that can be the first of the line uh, that will have this opportunity for OMSAFE. Uh, I'm a strong believer that we need to have uh, such capability fitted on the uh, previous model and the legacy products. Perfect. Well, many thanks for all of your questions. They've been fantastic, and, and thank you guys for answering them so elegantly. Um, we're now going to see some images of the TBM and their, its actual construction, which is a fascinating process that I saw very recently.
thank you very much uh, for your time today. Um, it's been an amazing day, I have to say. And as someone who is new to the aviation industry, <laughs> honestly, very, very new, and new to the world of TVM, I am quite amazed and flabbergasted. Um, it's been, uh, I'll let you into a little secret. I live not very far away, and I have passed this place on numerous, numerous occasions on the way to the airport, and I never knew it existed. I saw the sign, I saw the buildings, but I had no idea of the magic that was going on inside, nor the passionate and potentially fanatical people that buy these planes, and I can see why they love them so much. And uh, it's been a real, for my part, a real pleasure to interact with a, a real family-oriented company that produces something that they have so much pride in. Um, it's been a real pleasure. So you see what you have to do next is buy one TBM now. I'm going to start saving now. Yeah. I've told my wife. I have warned her. I also read uh, my, my four-year-old daughter uh, a book, which was the, the making of the TBM, uh, which she loves. And she said, Daddy, I want one. Uh, so that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm now forced to, to uh, start, start saving. saving. Start yeah. saving. Well, uh, Tobias, on, on behalf of our 10,000 employees and, uh, and, of course, uh, all of our TBM customers, thank you for the experience. It's been the first for us. Thank you very much for taking us in this virtual world, mm -hmm. and let's hope that we are going to see each other very, very soon after COVID. Thank you, and, and Jim, thank you again for your business. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.